selling your condo privately. How to sell your Toronto condos and assignments privately. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate agent with Search Realty and mortgage broker with Search Mortgage. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to sell your condos and assignments without a real estate agent. <laughs> what? You're going to tell us how to do the job without you? Yes, I will. Okay, so how do you sell your condos privately? You have a condo in Toronto, in Ontario, wherever. You have a condo assignment in Toronto, in the area, in Ontario, wherever. And you want to sell it privately. Why would you want to sell it privately? Well, the main reason you want to sell it privately <coughs> excuse me, is because, very dusty, all the construction. Um, the reason you want to sell it privately is because you're trying to save some money. You want more money in your pocket, which is very good. This is a really good business thinking. At the end of the day, every business deal we do, we make, what we want to do is have more money left in our pocket after everything, okay? After all the hard work and the sweat and the stress and the payments and everything that had to come with it and the late nights and this, you know. At the end of the day, what left in your pocket is what matters. Uh, to me, it's not only about how much left in my pocket is how easy or hard it was to obtain. That means if it's really, really difficult, you know, and it's just, I, I got to move a mountain to do something simple, I'm just not going to do it because there's so many opportunities in life. You know, if I have um, a client that is looking for something that is impossible or, in, or say to me, you know, I want this and then I give them what they want and then they, they're not going to go for it. Uh, you know, the first one, second one, fine, but once it's a, it's a pattern, you know, we got to move on. So when you sell your condo privately, you got to think to yourself, how much time and effort will it take um, in addition to how much money will stay in my pocket? So let's look at a few options, okay? First, let's look at why people sell in privately. Well, they sell privately because they want to save some money, they want to save 2.5% or 5% or this or that, or they have an, they have an idea that, you know, a uh, certain person from a certain place will come and buy my condo or maybe I'll, I'll let my neighbors know first and they will know someone in the neighborhood. I mean, someone must, must want to buy this condo. There's, there's someone who must want to buy this inside corner unit right here that I'm offering you on the second floor for a million bucks, right? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. So, <clears throat> look at this beautiful hydrangea, end of the season. Oh, look at these guys. You gotta smell the flowers, my friend. That's the most important thing in life. Ah, so nice out here. <laughs> all these little, uh, you know, Toronto used to, I'm gonna veer here for a second, but Toronto used to be known for all these little neighborhoods and pockets, and it, it's not the same, because all modern, designed by computer, and you kind of can tell, but it's still really, really nice, and I love it, and it's like, it's clean, no cigarette butts, thank God, it's really nice. So I, I want to sell this condo, you know, about this condo, there's the Thompson here, there's Kingley right here, going to get uh, occupancy very soon, got some assignments here, 525 Adelaide, some nice values here, okay, and um, I want to sell it privately, now I may want to flip it, I bought it from the developer and I want to sign it privately, or I already closed on it, or you know, I bought it resale, I want to sell it privately, why, why shouldn't I do it? Well, you can. It's okay. You can. Uh, you have a bunch of options. If you want to sell it privately, like real, real privately. Oh my God! I, I'm gonna walk away from this noise. But if you want to sell it privately, completely privately, that means you're not even gonna go on MLS. So you need to you need to let people know what you got. You need to let people know that you have a condo available and or an assignment available, and you want to sell it. So you can put a sign in the window if uh, there is a window, because sometimes it's not even finished, so you have no keys. You got no window. Um, you can put a sign online, you can put a sign in the street, you can tell all your friends, you can send emails, you can make a video, you know, there's a million ways to do it. You can put a classified ad, I mean, it doesn't matter wherever I go, that noise, but hopefully they'll, they'll stop soon. I'm just going to speak closer to the microphone and uh, hopefully it'll go away. But that's, that's downtown, 9 a.m. Okay, so you, you have options, uh, which is fine. Um, the problem with these options, uh, of course, that you know they don't result in much. You know, 50% of all the listings on MLS itself do not sell. 50%, one in, one in two won't sell. They have to get terminated, suspended, or come back. Usually, a lower price. I covered that yesterday. Um, and and the other thing is that uh, units that don't sell, you know, they don't sell usually for the price value um, equilibrium. 
uh, the intended buyer, someone who comes to see the unit, if they can see it or look at the plans, if it's an assignment, they go, you know, I don't want to spend that much or I don't, I don't know the value, I don't see the value. Sometimes they don't understand the value, which is the hardest thing to do because you may be sitting on an amazing property, but people can't see the value. And that could be because, you know, all kinds of reasons. Uh, it's not finished, it's a new area, it's an up and coming, your marketing sucks, you know, all that stuff. But you want to sell it privately, right? So what do you do, the first thing you do? You, <laughs> I'll tell you how you do it. Uh, you make a little flyer, you take some pictures, and then you send it around to a few friends and you send it to your neighbors and see if you get any, any responses. You put it on your Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever social media you have, and you hope to get some. Most, uh, most uh, private sellers do not buy advertising. They're, like, they're really tight. They won't even spend a hundred bucks on advertising. Now, people selling uh, condos and homes privately for a million bucks, but they won't, they're not going to spend a hundred bucks on advertising. Guess what? 90%, 95%, 99% of these private sellers don't actually amount to anything. They just sit on the market forever. And when I say sit on the market, there's no market because if you don't know about it, uh, it doesn't work. And that's the magic of MLS. You know, it's so big and it's just a consensus that everyone going to MLS because anyone, don't forget the MLS in Canada, in Toronto, multiple listing service. What it does, it aggregates every agent that is registered with the system, that is registered as an agent, and you know, we pay hefty fees every year, thousands of dollars to be part of the system. And all these, all these uh, uh, properties, condos, commercial, businesses for sale, you know, anything that is fit for MLS goes on it. And you can just browse thousands and thousands of listings, <laughs> get information, compare prices. And there's aggregate sites, yossi.searchrealty.co, that's an aggregate site that shows you all the listings. Plus all the private listings I up upload to that and all the private listings for search realty or pocket listing as they used to be called in the old days. Um, <clears throat> and some assignments will show up there. Okay. But when you sell privately, you don't have access to MLS. So you need to advertise it on your own. So, you know, Kijiji, Craigslist, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, buying ads. If you know that cheap, all that stuff you got to do, invest in some professional photography or at least good photography. Uh, let's admit it, most private sellers, have, uh, they, don't, they don't do that. They don't even do that first step, okay? And that's why most of them fail. Uh, the second is, of course, matching your price to the value. Now, there's a perceived price, and I, I gotta tell you, and that's a psychological thing, and I don't know if I can prove it to you, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's a direct correlation between where you post your property and the value they can attach to it. That means if I post on MLS, it's gotta go through a, a huge system of checks and balances, you know? Everyone has to sign, I need to sign, my broker is reviewing this, they won't even allow it on MLS, and if, even if I miss one initial, they're gonna reject the listing, you know, they're very strict. And that's okay, because that's how we keep it, everyone's playing the same game, so you have to be strict. And strict is not a bad thing, strict actually means that you're gonna get, uh, you, you're gonna make sure that all the listings uh, adhere to the same standards and protocols, which is a great thing, because that means that I know that if there's a listing up, chances are the information is good on it. Now, obviously, there's so many listings and some agents uh, uh, don't do the work and they fall through the crack, but that's just, you know, human behavior and that's okay and you can fix it by one phone call. Uh, but when you, pri but when you uh, post uh, privately, people that look at your stuff, they don't have these checks and balances. So they'll, they'll look at you like, yeah, I don't know, like, who's this person? Maybe it's a fake. Maybe they're trying to take me to the bank, to the cleaners, you know. Um, there's, there's, um, there's less of a, of, a, of a trust implied, that thing again, what's going on there, so I'm uh, cutting some, cutting something, um, there's less trust implied when you advertise uh, privately because it didn't go through the system of checks and balances. It's not going through a person who's licensed, bonded, insured, has to pay fees. And, and, you know, if I screw up on the listing, I can lose my license. So it's not easy. If I screw up uh, on a patient, I'm a doctor, I can lose my license. You know, people go to jail for these things, uh, for all kinds of uh, mistakes, stupid or intended, doesn't matter. Um, but there's, there's a risk. So when, when you post it yourself, you have not, no such risk because, you know, you're not bonded and insured and you don't belong to any company or, or TREB with a 55,000 agents. So you can do whatever you want, but also the people that look at the listings, you know, they don't know what to expect because anyone can put the information, no checks and balances. So, 
you know, uh, it's really nice that you offer this property. I don't even know if it's yours. I can't even prove it's yours, okay? Now you can put anything you want on Kijiji or Craigslist, so what? You can put anything you want on Facebook, so what? It doesn't mean it's real. I can take a picture of a nice house, say it's for sale, but I don't have it. And then they call me, oh yeah, I don't have it anymore. Uh, but I have another house for you. That's, I mean, that's the oldest trick in the book. Now sometimes it's true and that's okay, but mostly it just, it's, just, it's just a grabber, it's just, it's just a catch to get buyers. And most people are naive enough to be, believe that, but many are not. So the first thing is, is uh, you know, where you post and how you post is the value of the information. Look at this. Uh, so nice. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, of course, pricing. Pricing. So, you know, when you post on MLS, it's very easy to see your price because you can get a history of the building. Condos.ca provides history now. And you can basically very quickly um, realize if the pricing is right or not. When you post privately, you, can, you can't really tell that. You can because now you have to go back to MLS and do the research and, and start cross-referencing the information. So again, there's a port of trust here. When it's on MLS, I'm not necessarily advocating for MLS, but I'm showing you the advantage of being a part of a large system here. There's disadvantages too, but this is most very important, of course. You know, it's, it's like when you sell on Amazon, even if you're not from Amazon, you can still tell that because it's an Amazon system, they are bound by some rules and Amazon got you back if they didn't ship you what you wanted. You can always call Amazon, but if some private seller, and that's you, the seller, just posting on some website, you know, I don't know, it's just like you just made up a Gmail, you know, and you made up a name, it's not even your name, your name's Bob and your Gmail is uh, 23bobstreet at gmail.com. It just doesn't look real. So, uh, you know, you're probably going to get less cost too. <clears throat> and the pricing, you know, I, I, I can't, when you uh, pri when you uh, privately listing, you're not providing me with CMA, with comparable market analysis, that means show me in the area, similar units, buildings, condos, assignments are sold. Say, so, you know, so-and-so sold uh, next to me a very similar unit um, for 10,000 less. There are two floors below me, so I can charge 10,000 more because it, it makes sense. It's the same unit, higher floor, better view. Okay, <coughs> but can you do it privately? Are you providing that information? <clears throat> no, of course not. Are you providing any value of the listing? No, of course not. I, I can tell you, like, so this week I had two private sellers call me, two, one at a home, maybe he called last week, but uh, one at a home that wasn't selling, wasn't MLS, didn't sell, and now he said, I'm going to sell it privately, I'm going to call some agents, and they're going to bring me a buyer. So that's the one, the, the one who couldn't sell it uh, because it was priced too high, and the other will call you and say, I'm going to sell it privately, but I'm going to let a few agents, um, and there you go. Okay, bring me a buyer. So these are the two uh, typical types of private selling. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna put it on the market. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell it myself. Uh, you, you bring me a buyer. Another agent will bring me a buyer. Or I, I couldn't sell it. Obviously, the price is too high, but they can't admit it. Um, or you know, or maybe the presentation sucks. Or combination. Oh, this thing again. And uh, and because the price is too high or the combination, the presentation, the price, the value, you know, didn't sell. So now I don't, I don't trust it anymore. It's not, it's, it, I don't trust any of this anymore. So I'm going to go sell privately, call a couple of agents, you see, bring me a buyer. Ah, you know, it doesn't work like that. Um, and why does it work like that? There's a few reasons. First of all, as an agent, you got to understand, I put everything on the line. I put my face on the line, my name on the line, my license on the line. So. I got, I got to take jobs that, that are going to succeed and are going to um, pay for my time and pay for my skills and my knowledge and, and jobs that are possible. If you give me, uh, if, if you overprice in your place that didn't sell and it's still overpriced and I asked you a bit about, you know, how about the photography, can you make a few changes and, and I get a lot of no, no, this is, this is what it is, this is what it is, just give me a buyer. I'm not going to get you a buyer. I'm not even going to try, okay? There's only so many hours in a day, and I can only sit on my ass so many hours in a day on the computer, on the phone. You know, there's other things in life, and you got to enjoy it. It's very important. Smell the flowers and the hydrangeas over there. Um, <clears throat> so if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if your proposal, if, if your value proposition 
is not good. Um, maybe some agents will go for it anyways, and maybe they get lucky. Uh, but the chances here, you know, if, if uh, you want to sell it privately, then you go to an agent and say, hey, bring me a buyer. Uh, it's not going to happen. The agent doesn't want to cannibalize the own market. That means, what if I advertise this listing and then another agent came to me and I said, well, you know, they're only going to pay me to bring a buyer myself, but they're not paying for another agent. You did see it through my marketing. I invested in marketing. I did the work my skills, my knowledge, my 20 years of experience, my reputation that is very hard to get, you know. And then um, uh, I survived that long, so you know, I must be doing something right. Uh, and then another agent raised me a buyer, no, I can't pay you. So now, now what do we have to do? So we basically, if, if we can't do it, we have to close our business and everyone's selling privately. That's okay too, that's possible, but in the, in the, in the way that we, wor we work, <laughs> It, it, it's it's uh, it's not possible to uh, use the system and abuse it at the same time. The system is built to protect itself, uh, which makes sense because it takes a lot of effort and resources and money and time, and programmers and agents and administrators and phone calls and support centers and whatnot uh, to to keep it, to keep it operating. So it, it needs fuel to run. The fuel is money, and if it's not going to get that fuel, it's not going to be run, and then no one can use it. So that's the thing. <clears throat> and your value proposition, you know, wh what I find is the value proposition um, of a lot of private seller is not honed in. Now, everyone in Toronto know, think they know about real estate, right? I know about real estate. I don't need a real estate agent. I know everything. I've seen this. I've read that. I've saw that. That's great. It's like it's like the I don't know. It's like the person who's uh, the master chef tell me he can be a dentist now. I've watched a bunch of de dentist videos and I've been to the dentist and I've. I've had it done before, I can do it. No, you can't. Uh, the plumber say, hey, I work on construction sites all day long, I can be an electrician now. No, you can't. You know, it, it just doesn't work. Um, but people need, um, a lot of private sellers, you know, <laughs> and they do call me like, hey, I, I'm gonna put this uh, condo for sale and it's very attractive, you know, it's uh, $1 million, $2 million, bring me a buyer. I usually don't. And the reason I don't is because um, my chances of success are so, so small, the complications are so difficult, and the cost to me in resources, in time, are huge. So if I'm to go and spend 20 hours of my life marketing a property, at least I need a fair chance to sell it and get paid for my time, right? It, it's fair. If you're going to do the job, you're going to get paid. So really, being real estate is not fair because the chances you're going to close the deal are not 100%. They're usually less than 50 because all life happens, price not right, all that stuff. You know, I already told you 50% of properties on MLS sell. And the other, the other half, you got to reprice them, reload them, or they just go back to the owners. That happens too. So <clears throat> in order to involve, involve an agent, say, oh, you have, you have like, you know, when you used to um, do my consulting work, and I used to know, and I still do a lot of people in the business world, People come to me, hey, you know all these people, I have this product, why don't you just promote it for me, I'll give you 5%. It's like, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no, I'm just not going to do it, that's just ridiculous. Do you know what it takes to work 20 years, 20 years, work really, really hard every day, doesn't matter what, rain, shine, ice, snow, all, everything you have to go through. And then the reason I have reputation and I have a good address book is because I adhere to good standards. I think my standards are good and um, I think it's working. So, you know, a lot of people are trying to cut corners, which is fine. If you can, why not? Save yourself some money. That's totally fine. It's a free world. Um, but when it comes to selling your condo and selling your condo privately, very few can. Nonetheless, if you can present your condo properly, if you can get to the audience you need, and if you can put a good value proposition, you have a good chance of selling it. But what do you have to do in order to do that? You have to spend some time, you have to spend some money, and you have to spend your resources, okay? Because you gotta like, obviously everyone has to like clean up the place, get it ready for sale, maybe it's an assignment, there's nothing to do. Then you gotta create a value presentation. If you're, an ass if you're assigning, you gotta compete with all the other agents and uh, the developer, and you cannot advertise an MLS. If you're selling privately and it's completed, you still cannot advertise an MLS, so now you have to invest even more in marketing and in value proposition because don't forget you're not going to have a name like Yossi Kaplan MBA behind you. It's just like 
bobcondo123 at gmail.com and my dear Bob, it's not even your real name. I don't know anything about you. How can I trust you? I have no trust. Okay? So you need to generate that trust right away. You need to generate uh, really good uh, marketing materials. You need to price it right. You need to know what's sold in a building. Maybe you have some of that information, but can you put it all together and then can you reach thousands of people um, to see your ads? And would you do it? Do you have the time and the money and the inclination to do that? So most people will, you know, like they decide to sell privately, they take the chances. Some will even go to services where they give you a free listing service or like $1 listing service. And unfortunately, once in a while I see this, they go on MLS and then uh, if you don't look at the very small fine letters at the very bottom, it says it's a mere listing. Um, then you call the agent and say, well, you know, I can't really help you. You've got to call the owner. Then you call the owner and you go, hey, what's going on? And then usually there's some like nasty, surly guy on the phone. And they go, okay, that's why your listing is 95 days on the market. Because you, you, you can't communicate. You're just angry and you're not doing any, any good job. So I can't help you with that. Okay. So when you want to sell your condo privately, you can do it. But you have to do all the work and you have to generate the value and you have to show me that you're real and you have to have really good marketing and it's got to be really really good because you got to compete with professionals that do it every day day in day out so if you're smart enough and dedicated enough and have the skills and the knowledge and willing to spend the time and resources to get a good value proposition to create the marketing material to get the right uh, marketing channels to answer the calls to answer the emails to provide the information, to open the door for showings, you know, yes, you can do it. And, and that's what you pay me to do because this is the work I do. Now people forget, oh, you know, it's so easy. You just put on MLS and you get a buyer. No, it's not that easy. So when you try to sell it yourself, you start to see how difficult it is. Even if you have the best price in the building, even whatever, even if it's the best unit, it's not easy. And then when the offers come, people are crazy. You have no idea what kind of offers I get, but people are really, really crazy and they give you some crazy offers and then, you know, they get, <laughs> you just get into this people thing and it's exhausting. Dealing with people, especially when it comes to money and emotions and all that is very difficult. You have to be very patient, you know, see the big picture, remember all the stuff and then basically just keep at it. It takes a lot of time and effort and energy. And when you do it day in, day out for so long, you know, you, you need to get paid for it. And that's what it is. Um, you know, a lawyer that charges $500 an hour, $500 an hour, that's what some people make in a week. But you know, they worked hard for it and they put the seven in position to give advice that worth $500 an hour. So that's what they do. Some of them charge $2,000 an hour, whatever. Okay, so that's, that's what it is. Um, a real estate agent charges a lot less but they still provide the service, okay? I'm not saying every profession is worth exactly what per hour, that's not the point. The point is that if you wanna get, if you wanna do a professional job, you go to a professional, but if you don't go to a professional, just be prepared to do the work yourself and to realize what the costs are in time, in, 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 uh, in a currency of time, skills, effort, knowledge, answering phone calls, making marketing, opening the door, all that stuff that otherwise you would not have to do okay so this is how to sell your condos and assignments privately you can do it um, if you like it takes a lot of effort if you have the time if you have the skills if you have the knowledge if you have money to spend on advertising do it but usually um, I would recommend you know don't call the agent and say bring me a buyer they're not gonna do anything their motivation is very low you know like there's no marketing there's nothing to show and I'm going <coughs> to advertise that stuff for you. And then another agent will call me and now I, I, I can't get paid and they can get paid. And you don't want to get, and, and then the listing gets burnt. Burnt means, you know, the agents and the buyers, they start to understand. You get the hunting monkey effect. The hunting monkey effect is where hunting monkeys on one island uh, learn to do something magically, mysteriously. All the monkeys around, all the other monkeys on other islands already know how to do it. So, you know, the word spreads somehow. They say, oh yeah, that seller at that uh, building, there is crazy. she's crazy, he's crazy, don't even work with them. They don't want to pay the agent, they're being very difficult, da, da, da. Now, even if you're not difficult, <laughs> the agent can get upset and say, you know, oh, don't work with him because he doesn't want to pay commission. He does not understand our value, who disrespects our profession. And that's the, that's, the, that's the pushback you'll get from the agent community. And the pushback you're going to get from the buyer community is, who is this person selling for themselves? 
we don't even know them. We don't don't know who they are, um, and they're overpricing. And this is because, pe because people tend to take, talk negative a lot. It's like the negative train. Once you're on, it's hard to get off. So we'll keep it positive regardless. It doesn't matter. Um, if you want to sell it privately, you can. I gave you the steps to do it. I told you what's going to be involved. Um, sooner or later, you're going to need a lawyer too. And then, of course, um, if you get any weird things in the contract, you have to review it. Uh, make sure you review it. And then maybe you get into some back and forth with the lawyer. So make sure the lawyer charges you a flat fee and not 400 bucks an hour because before you know it, it's $8,000 to sell the condo. Okay, so pros and cons, all good. Yossi, out.